No wasting time. No chatting. No fancy effects. Super Speedy Fix Episode. <laughs> no, stop that. The second C64 from the bundle of machines that Paul, Universal Retro Boss, sent over for me to repair. This one has a case that's a little tatty and grubby. Some of the clips are broken on the back. I can do something about that later. Inside we have a socketed CPU, PLA, both CIAs, this ROM, U8, and obviously the SID and VIC2. Having so many chips in sockets can make finding faults really simple. Ah, an RF shield. What do the pros do with this, Lee? Oh, I can finally do what all the pros do. Yoink! Uh, really? Yoink? Oh, no, 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 no. Take two. Yeah, it's just... It's just Yeet! So slick. Things are a bit grubby inside too. A blast of air removes the worst. The only sign of work on the back of this board is a big chunky bodge wire under the power switch. I can't see any obvious damage, but it must be there for a reason. I'll leave it alone unless there's some power problems. Let's power on and see what we're dealing with here. Black screen. Lovely. A black screen. Dead test first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six flashes. Okay. Three, four, five, six. Okay. Power cycle and oh. One flash. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Inconsistent flashes, I've found, don't necessarily mean the RAM is at fault. I mean, it could be, but in my very limited experience, it means the associated logic or PLA could be the problem. Still, rule out the easy stuff first. Before I do that, I should remove the SID. It isn't needed for these tests. Let's run through the possibilities. There are no empty RAM chips, so I feel more confident the memory is actually okay. There are no MOS branded logic chips, so I can probably push that down the list of possibilities for now. But the PLA is a PLA that Commodore made badly. A quick feel about the board looking for any chips that are getting a bit warm. All of them are as warm as you might expect. Right, the easiest way to test the PLA is to put the suspect chip into a handy C64. Here's one. This is the C64 from the recent Quick Fix episode, and I fitted the suspect PLA. It's gone from there, and I've put it in here, and we get a black screen. And it has a black screen. I wonder Lovely. If I put the diagnostic cart in here, whether we get the same intermittent flashing. Yes. One flash. PLA, it's always a PLA. Okay. New PLA fitted. You ready? So, is that fixed? No. Oh. It's not. That's interesting. That means this won't be the fastest quick fix so far. Okay, cool. I thought this was going to be a two minute fix video. Oh, right. An unusual pattern 
I wonder what the C64 Pictorial Fault Guide thinks of this. It should be fairly easy to match it up. Link in the description for this handy site. Or Google it, dealer's choice. So we're looking for a checkerboard pattern. Hmm. Oh, that looks promising. The VIC-2 chip, eh? Oh, I'm taking the VIC out. Okay, VIC-2 out. And... Let's pop it into a working board and test it. There's a lot of thermal paste on here. I'll just mop that up first. It gets everywhere. This is my own C64, which I thought I'd removed the can from to make the VIC-2 easier to remove. I really shouldn't remove it this way, but I do anyway. Should keep the comments section busy at least. It's not the best way to do it. Horrible sockets. So will this show the same fault? Yes. Yes, it's the Vic. Okay, the Vic 2 and PLA are dead. Arras. That Vic is toast. I'll put my working Vic 2 into the faulty machine and see if that fixes it. Yeah. Works. That works. Test. Diagnostics time. Yeah. All good. Well, as good as it can be without the full test harness. Not checked that SID yet. In it goes. Nothing. Not a sausage. Not even a burp. Oh well, three dead chips in here. The PLA, the VIC-2, and the SID. SID's an X sid 1982 SID, dead. Never mind SID. Let's get another SID. This is a 1983 SID. Luckily, Paul sent over a couple of spare SIDs. The last machine didn't have one inside and now this one is faulty. <laughs> Fixed. Yep. Good. How about the keyboard? Whilst this one is grubbier than the last one, all the keys are working exactly as expected. Nice. Not my favourite job stripping down and scrubbing keyboards. Last test I have at my disposal is running a game. I still need to sort out a tape deck for C64 so I can test loading from tape. And it's all working fine. The last thing to fix are the case clips. I've 3D printed some new ones. Link in the description for the Thingiverse file. The way these are designed is quite clever. There's a ridge that guides how high the clips should stick up above the edge. Two-part epoxy is probably the best glue I have available for this type of work. I've made sure to scratch up the two surfaces to give a good key. It's probably not necessary, but a clamp will ensure the bond is tight.
there's a little squeeze out of the epoxy along the inside edge. While it's still fluid, it's easy to scrape out with a bamboo skewer. Super handy having a pack of these in the workshop. The case clips were just a bit too tight and I ended up filing them to make them fit. But next time I would probably leave a tiny gap when gluing them in so they just sit a little higher. All done. It wasn't the most challenging repair, but it was still fun to bring another one back to life. For the recent comment troll that told me I need to repair things more like Adrian Black, I hope you enjoyed this video. I made it just for you. Ha <laughs> ha. Subscribe. <laughs>